leaders throughout the city and country. His most recent accomplishment is, is confounding and the program director of Iron Man Club, Inc., a nonprofit 501c3, a leadership development program for inner city male youth inspired by the conceptual language and the scholarship of Imam W.D. Muhammad. He is also the founder and director of, of Light of Perception, a human development and thinking motive, modification program. Tyree El, El Amin holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Houston, Clear Lake in, in kinesiology and is a proud father of two sons, Kasim and Khalil. We'd like to bring forth the man of the year, Tyree, Imam Tyree El Amin. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi Kareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear Muslims, uh, I had no idea that I was, knew I was in the running, I'm nominated by an anonymous text message. Don't know who nominated me. Um, but for me to say that this award is mine would be real selfish of me. Um, I have to give credit to the community of people, of leaders, men and women, and children, the weekend school children, who really put me in a position to be acknowledged in this setting. It's a great honor. I wasn't born into this community under the leadership of Imam W.D. Muhammad. Rahimullahi alayk. But when Allah invited me to Islam, He also invited me to the leadership of Imam W.D. Muhammad four years after I took Shahada. And I, and I say that because I was an Imam in a different community than this one. Allah had chose this for me. But He chose me to lead a particular way. And it was the language of Imam W.D. Muhammad that taught me, quote, that lead to lead is to serve Imam Muhammad said and he said that leadership is in resourceful people look around this room resourceful people people who have the potential in them and they know it and they're not afraid to express it and they're not afraid to give themselves to the service of other people that's what I think this is about for me we have a lot going on so much going on that I couldn't be with you the whole weekend I'm, I flew in today I got to fly out in the morning because there's other things that I have to tend to regarding service to the community. So uh, this award is something that is, I will take back, and this, this is for my Houston community who produced me and who has helped and educate me in religious leadership and service to people. I want to thank you all. It's wonderful being here with you all. I wouldn't have missed it for anything, but Allah has favored this community. And I don't have to tell you, you can tell me better. Our leader once said that we can't stop now, right? And I always say to people that I don't follow a school of thought. Imam Muhammad for me represents a school of thinking. It's a present tense thing. It's not something in the past, it's something that's right now. So I'm not only a student, I'm a producer of what the legacy of Imam W. Muhammad meant to humanity. And I'm a fan of all the old lectures from the 70s and the early 80s because I see purpose in them for right now in today's time. So I want to thank you all for supporting the mosque cares and what the mosque cares does for this community. And I want to remind you all, encourage you all, inspire you all, if I may, Give yourself to the service of people. We don't have to jockey for a position in this society to be accepted as Muslims. Look, the normal, down-to-earth human being will look at your service 
And when people talk about Muslims, like my family defend me, I'm the only Muslim, I have two Muslims, three Muslims in my family, my uncle and I have a distant cousin. And I have a huge family. And just by my service and my uncle's service and my cousin's service, when people say things about Islam, they quick to say, that's not true, because my nephew, my cousin, my mother tell you, my son is a Muslim. And that's not Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's give you, ma'am, time to read it, El Amin. You know, it's really uh, powerful how Allah can, because uh, I was raised in the nation of Islam and raised under the language of Imam Muhammad. I was, uh, I was sneaking, uh, when my father would leave, I was sneaking his 45 little, little record players and play uh, Imam Muhammad, and it would say, this is the world community of Al-Islam. And I would listen to Imam, he'd give the Al-Fatiha. How many of y'all remember the Al-Fatiha Imam Muhammad used to do? I used to love that, man. It was like so soothing the way he would, uh, he would recite it. And so I would sneak and uh, play it. And so I think I was, man, I was young. I can't remember, but this was like before the 80s. And so, uh, so I was raised on the language. But just hearing Imam Tariq talk, it, I just see how powerful Allah can bless and touch someone and how powerful the language of our community is. And just hearing and listening to him, it's like he's been raised in the community all his life. But that's how powerful the language of his community is. So we're thankful to Allah for that. Allah At this point, we would like to welcome our Muslim female woman of the year. Sister Zarina El Amin Naim. Sister Zarina El Amin Naim is an author, cultural specialist, global presenter whose motivation is to create bridges between and amongst diverse populations. Her, her electric experience ranges from managing development programs in Sierra Leone, West Africa to working with Michigan communities around the religious and racial healing. From 2005 and 2007, Sister Zarina completed her master's in anthropology, her research center on single Muslims whom she interviewed about everything from, from their upbringing relationship to the masjid and community goals for marriage, previous relationships. Later she published her findings in Jihad of the Soul Single, singlehood and the search for love in, in Muslim America. This book was the first in-depth look at the lives of single Muslims and their quest for love in America. Later, Sister Zarina went on to co-author Light Blue, the little book of marriage advice we should have st stick from the beginning. In 2007, Sister Zarina founded NIA, an independent publishing consulting and creative living company, positively inform, entertain, and motivate communities whose voices and accomplishments are often, are often absent from mainstream media. Nia Press teaches authors how to publish their own books in order to spread their, their message, generate multiple uh, streams of income, and make their mark in the world. And, uh, and I wanna say, uh, when I first met Sister Darina, it was over uh, 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. And it was, uh, it was at one of the youth conferences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's amazing to see that she's now the Muslim Female of the Year <laughs> as an adult <laughs> getting the award. So we'd like to present Sister Serena El Amin Naeem. Um, thank you so much. Um, I first would like to thank those who thought enough of me to nominate me for this award. And when the brother um, uh, Omar 
called me and said, I think we're gonna we're gonna nominate you, sister. You've been your name kept coming up and we wanna nominate you for this award. And I was like, okay, alhamdulillah, thank you. So I sent him some information. But in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, okay, that's nice, but I'm not gonna get that. You know, <laughs> like I'm thinking, oh, that's not gonna happen because there are so many people who are doing so many wonderful things, you know? And so you look around and you see all these great things and I was like, oh, that's not gonna happen. But a lot of times we have that type of negative chatter in our minds about what we're doing in our lives. And we trivialize ourselves many times and we put ourselves sort of thinking that, oh, it's not really what I'm doing, it's not that important. It's just something, it's just a hobby or it's just this or it's just that. So that was what was going on in my mind, honestly, when he called me and, and said that they thought about nominating me for this award. And then when I found out that I actually won the award, I was like, wow, Allah like, is um, sending me messages. <laughs> like Allah is our friend. And Allah really does send us messages in times when we don't know exactly which way that we're going sometimes. Like you kind of have so many things that you want to do and so many things that you, that you have in your, your heart that you got to achieve this. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And many times you can get super busy doing so many things and you're not quite sure like which way you want to go. So this was a time that this for me, right? Where I was doing so many different things. I was getting lots of calls, but I started to feel like I was busy all the time. But not like this busy, but like this busy, like circle busy. And that's not a good type of busy, right? You wanted to have this type of busy. So I felt like this type of busy. And I think Allah was like, look chick, like you're on the right path. <laughs> Stay what you're doing, and I'm going to give you this award, inshallah, from your community, from people that know you, from people that love you, from people that support you, and inshallah, you will continue to do what you need to do if you stay in the way that you need to, on the surat, like I met our brother here on the surat. And so I think, you know, those of you who thought enough of me to nominate me for um, this award, and I say to all of us who are doing many things and you often feel like, you don't know if it's actually beneficial or you don't know if people are benefiting or that they're actually receiving something of what you are doing. And if you feel in your heart that you are doing what Allah is calling you to do, we ask you to continue to do that. Because you may not recognize the benefit that you're doing, but it can be touching people all along. And so now that I've been really focused on these books, right? Like I published my books, Alhamdulillah, and really helping other people to publish their books. And sometimes it can be difficult because books are like babies and people are artists and they want to have their books exactly the way that they want them to be. So it can be a little bit difficult. But when I recognize that in order for our communities to go like that, that we have to continue to build upon what the other generation has learned, right? So we have like Brother Nasheeds who have so much wisdom and so much information and if we don't pass that on, my children, I will have to relearn all of those experiences. So in order for our entire communities to ascend, we have to pass that knowledge on so that we don't keep relearning the same lessons over and over and over and over and over again. So inshallah, my life right now, anyway, I'm one of those type of, I like to do this and this and this and this. So my life right now, anyway, is dedicated to helping our community to, to capture our stories that we have and to document those so that inshallah the future generations can, um, can learn from that. So I thank you all. I thank you all for your service and may Allah continue to bless our community and may Allah continue to allow us to have whatever it is within ourselves that we need, whether it be an award or whatever you need in your life for you to keep going. May Allah send that to you inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu <laughs> Let's give Sister Serena another round of applause. Sister Serena, I might have to uh, give you a call because I'm trying to finish my book and right now I'm going like this. <laughs> so I need to show you to go like that. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a call, inshallah. I hope you love. At this point, we would like to honor our Muslim Young Adult Male of the Year. 
Brother Raheem Saman. Brother Raheem Saman. Brother Raheem Samad is a, is a Newark native and is an entrepreneur, a visual artist, and an audio engineer. Raheem began his quest as an, as an entrepreneur as a, at a young age. Determined to create a way for himself and his community, Raheem opened his first business at the age of 22 in 2008. Fresh for a cheap clothing store. Wow, okay. <laughs> in Lawndale, in Lawnside, New Jersey. Raheem has also ventured out and established his own taxi company and food truck. Samaj Taxi Service and Samaj Halal Kitchen, huh? Along with his current business, Truth Be Told Multimedia and Surat, and Surat Denim Clothing Design. Raheem produces visual imaginary sounds and clothing that are artistically engaging and maintain creative integrity. Raheem began his quest as a lover of music himself, determined to provide a comfortable space to record his, his and others' work. Raheem innate, Raheem's innate innovation and drive led him to, slim, to simp, simply build it himself. A self-proclaimed auto-dictate, -dic Raheem pursued his, his know-how independent Lee and eventually received his certificate in audio engineering and music production from LB, LBB 10 Studios in Philadelphia and built a studio from scratch. Wow. Hmm. This space provided an accessible and convenient venue for others to pursue their passion without sacrificing their creative control and vision and integrity. There's more to his resume, as you, as you can see, but uh, we're gonna invite our Muslim male, young adult of the year, Brother Rahim, to the stage. Congratulations. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, uh, brother, for that introduction. Alhamdulillah. Um, I wanna take a moment to thank uh, the Mosque Cares for inviting me out here. Uh, it's been a while since I've been to the convention. Um, since the man passed, uh, may Allah be pleased with him. And it's a blessing to be back on these terms and receive this award. Uh, so I'm truly honored and, um, and humbled by this. And um, I am also want to thank whoever put my name into <laughs> you know, this to uh, have me nominated to, to see something in me, uh, uh, to think that I'm deserving of this award. So I'm grateful to that person or persons, whoever uh, submitted this information, uh, submitted my name. And um, it's just, it feels good to be here. It really does. Uh, it's like I said, it's been a while. And I've uh, seen a few people I haven't seen in a few years and connected with some people. And I look forward to coming back next year, inshallah. And uh, I see a brother, uh, you man Wallace, I see him juggling around like, a bunch of equipment, you know, taking pictures and doing video and things like that. And uh, I said to myself, I said, I want to extend my services, to, inshallah, next year to be assistant and help you know, with the production of uh, the convention, doing the video and things like that. So if you have me. So inshallah, I definitely would like to uh, be a part of this. And uh, like I said, it feels good to be back. And um, and also he spoke about, like, I have a clothing line, Sarat Denim, uh, Sarat Denim Clothing. You know, that's like Sarat the Musta King. And um, I started this clothing line. It actually came about a few years ago, but I actually launched it this year in the past, uh, this past June. And um, I wanted to create something. Every time, every business that I have and I've done, I always try to put some positive message behind it, or something that's going to inspire people to do good things. So when I started Sarah, you know, uh, it's not a Mus I'm not a Muslim brand. It's for everybody. You know, I get a lot of support from Christians and non-Muslims, and um, it serves as a constant reminder, you know, to stay on that path and to stay positive, you know. So you got, you got, it's fashionable, but it's, it also has a message, you know. So I thank everybody here who came out to my table and supported and bought T-shirts and hats and things like that. It's greatly appreciated, and um, yeah, just I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm just grateful to be here, <laughs> you know. Yes, I know I spoke in front of many people before, so I'm a little nervous, <laughs> you know. So you know, so I'm doing a lot. I'm just grateful. And I thank y'all. All right, with you. <laughs> Thank you.
Alhamdulillah, let's give Brother Rahim another hand. Alhamdulillah, see how beautiful that is. You know, it's one thing about uh, when you're a student of the Quran and a student of this community, how Allah blesses you with uh, all kind of different concepts and ideas of, in business. And, um, and I, I had a clothing line myself, you know, and, uh, and so just listening to his, uh, his bio, he, this brother does all kind of things. That's a blessing. You know, and, uh, um, and I'm a young entrepreneur growing up in the community, and uh, once somebody, I've always worked for myself. And so somebody said, man, you do, uh, you got a clothing line? You, uh, you an exterminator, you do all this? How you do all that? You like a Jamaican? I said, no, I'm a Muslim. <laughs> and I do anything that's legal. <laughs> So just hearing Brother uh, Rahim's bio kind of reminds us, I say, yeah, look at all that. We, so Allah, Allah blesses us with the insight and the capacity to expand our breasts. And when Allah, he revealed the Quran on Muhammad's heart, and his breasts, he expanded his breasts. So he gave him the capacity to serve, serve humanity. So that's what we do. We're continuing to follow in the footsteps of Muhammad the Prophet. Allahu Akbar. At this point, we would like to call our Muslim Young Adult Female of the Year, Sister Fazia Muhammad. I think I lost Sister Fazia's bio, but we're going to call Sister Fazia to the stage. <laughs> yes, ma'am. She, she's going to beat me up, but somebody jacked me for my, for my bio, so <laughs> inshallah, she'll forgive me, but we would yes, like yes. to uh, yes. <laughs> welcome to the stage and congratulate Thank Sister you. Fazia. Thank you. Thank Our you. Muslim female, young adult female of the year. Assalamualaikum. Um, I just want to thank the Mosque Cares for nominating me for the award. Um, I really had no idea about this. I got an email and I got a call and I was like, whoa, okay. <sighs> okay, um, basically, I'm just grateful to be able to have this gift to bless the world daily with my words of motivation and inspiration I do every day. Uh, on social media, so I'm guessing this is connection with that. So um, daily, I give a lot of advice, inspiration, motivational speaking because I think um, this generation needs it. Things happen every day. Um, people doubt. People don't have any self love for themselves. People don't think that they can do anything, and anything is possible. So. I'm the one to spread the message, spread the love every single day on my Facebook page with my videos that I do every day. I get messages, I meet people in person that tell me that I inspire them to do so many great things in their life. And it's just, I'm just so blessed and amazed that I'm blessed with this gift to be able to help the world do great things. So um, again, I just want to thank the Moss Kids for this um, award. And um, I'm just grateful and blessed to be able to help the world do great things on a daily basis with the words that I give every day. Sound like them. Once again, my apologies, Sister Fazia. <laughs> also, uh, um, okay. Also, um, our, our uh, please. Uh, the vendors are our, our awardees. Uh, they also have vending spaces out in the, in the lobby. So please, when you get a chance, stop by their vending booths. Um, I saw Sister Fazia's uh, her vending table. She's got some fly stuff out there. So go, go check it out and get a chance. Show up. Okay, moving right along.
How's everybody doing? How many live? Bob Wake Bob. We're gonna continue with a, a good evening. We waiting for uh, Sister Camila. She's gonna play some more. And a little bit, a little bit, and a little bit. Inshallah. So we gonna we gonna hang out and still still do our thing. It's, this is a national convention, right? How y'all feel? Everybody good? Bob yeah. Wake Bob. Give yourselves a round of applause. You know, each year, as we come to the, uh, the National Convention, this, it, get, it just gets more beautiful and more beautiful, right? This is beautiful, alhamdulillah. And so, you know, don't let the, the criticism of the criticizers cause you to doubt and, and, and have doubt about your community. You know who Imam Muhammad was and what he represented, and you know what he asked of you. So all you have to do is have faith in Allah faith in yourself and faith in the leadership of this community. So don't, no matter what you hear from whatever, whatever's going on, if somebody else got something else going on, don't let that sway you. Just keep your faith in Allah, your faith in yourself, and faith in the leadership of our community, and Allah will bless us, inshallah. Allah wakeba. So at this point, uh, we're getting into the commitment to service segment of our uh, program. And we would like to call Imam Talib Sharif. <laughs> Dating back to the mid-1930s, Masjid Muhammad, the nation's masjid, is, re is representative of the oldest established Muslim community in the nation's capital in America. It was, it was established as a first community mosque to be built from the ground up by American citizens in the nation's capital. And it is still currently the only mosque in Washington, D.C. that was built by citizens and residents of the, of the district. Located just off the New Jersey Avenue, northwest of 4th Street, ceremonially designed Islamic way in the city, Masjid Muhammad has long been a pillar in the neighborhood, the city of Washington, nationally and internationally, as well as the leader in the association of numerous masses and Islamic centers nationwide. Under the leadership of the late Imam W.D. Muhammad, it, it transitioned into mainstream Islam and has gone from smaller circles of, of self and broader circles of humanity and the universal teachings of the Holy Quran and Prophet Muhammad its members have proudly taken seriously the responsibility of citizenship and is comprised of the associ of associated with millions of healthy-minded, hard-working, loyal Muslims who are, who are in every field of public service and the private sector and are making significant contributions to support, protect, and invest in the betterment of our society in the United States of America. We would like to call forth Imam Talib Sharif, the Imam of the Nation's Mosque. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. It is indeed uh, an honor. You know, I was uh, speaking with uh, Sister Robin uh, about this recognition when it came up, because as a, a chief. Uh, in the Air Force, when you get to that level, uh, you don't get any recognition. You, your job is to give out recognition. So I wasn't used to getting recognition. But I would like to say it is sweet when you're recognized by your own. Uh, you know? And then you have this plaque, the Mars Cares Ministry of Imam Walter D. Muhammad, and has his son name on it from an organization that the Imam started and passed along to his son, and the consistency remains with improvement is a greater honor. We certainly certainly thank you. But, but like those who came before me, uh, no one does anything in a vacuum. Uh, I may be to some like that duck that looks cool on the surface of the water, but those pe that pellets going on underneath. Uh, we have to give tribute to my wife, who's there, and I definitely want her to come up and take a photo with me. Uh, and, uh, 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 and 
and we have a dynamic team, a staff. I mean, we can't do anything without people, right? Uh, Sister Fitra, Linda Bilal, Abdul Malik, uh, this table here, and there are many others in the room here. Uh, this is how we get things done. A lot, a lot gives us each other. And this is uh, very fitting uh, for me, speaking about service, service. You know, being of service. You know, I'm, I'm out of the uniform, so I, my motto is I'm out of service, but not served out. Uh, you know, we still continuing to serve. You know, before I, before I retired, I, I was planning, uh, many don't know this, I was actually planning to retire and come help Imam Wartha D. Muhammad before he passed. And, uh, but he passed before I re retired. I had, a, I had a special skill set that he was looking for. And I wanted to help him with that skill set that I had at that time. And very few people had that skill set. And that's what I was retiring wanting to do. And, uh, but uh, Allah saw, still saw fit for me to help him. Uh, in a, right now, what we're doing is helping him now. When, when, I, when I took the position, accepted the responsibility over the nation's mosque, at the very first Juma, when I looked out into the audience, right in front of me, was Imam Wartha D. Muhammad II. So he was there. Now, now what, I, what was happening, every significant thing that was happening in Washington, D.C., he would end up being in town. And I think, I think I remember we would do things at the Masjid being somewhere, and he would be there with us and participate in the wars. So I was saying, this is, this is uh, something that lost communicating, you know? And then now to see both of us on the same page together, me to be standing with him, both of us commitment to service, oh, that's such a great honor. Such a great honor. I, I would like to, if I could ask, I'm, I want to meet the protocol, get in the photo uh, with the president, but I would like those who are from D.C. to come up, if they can, real quickly, to share in the photo with us together, because this war is a tribute to the whole community. I think that would be Capital, they're going to be uh, this 
Smithsonian is going to be opening up the African American portion of uh, the museum. And so I messed around and told one of the brothers who live in DC that, that inshallah I'll be in town. So the next thing I know, I got Imam Talib coming up to me, saying, brother, I hear you're gonna be in town. Would you like to do the Jumbo? I said, wow. <laughs> Yeah, what you gonna say to a commander in the military? What you gonna say no? <laughs> I say yes, sir. <laughs> well, hopefully not. We let, let's give Imam Talib and community the nation boss for the Reverend Charles. Also, to his uh, Imam Maskia Mohammed. Let's give him acknowledge and give him a round of applause. Imam Maskia is the father of a 2016 Olympic gold medalist. Hello, oh, He's the father of an Olympic gold medalist. And that's big. That's big. That's big for our community. But it's big for America, but it's especially big for our community. So we thank Allah for that. To have, uh, to see that with the passing of the great Muhammad Ali, we have new, a new future ahead of us. And uh, Allah answered the call in 2016, months after Muhammad Ali, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. And we'll witness that in, in this 2016 Olympics, Allahu Akbar. So we have a bright and big future ahead of us, dear Muslims. So don't be caught up in all the naysaying that you hear, in all the neg negativity. Allah is with us. And like Imam Muhammad said, we can't stop now, right? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So this is a, I got a quiz. People would ask me, what, what, what's gonna be your quiz for the day? So here's my quiz for the day. What was Adam's name before he was Adam? Huh? What was Adam's name before he was Adam? Just think about that for a minute. What was Adam's name before he was Adam? <laughs> think about it, and uh, we we gonna continue the program. And if anybody who think they don't answer, just just flag me down, and uh, you know. <laughs> he was an Allah. Okay, that's good. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the answer. Go ahead. About clay. Clay. Okay, that's good. Now this is a now this is a, a a quiz that one of the pioneers, Muhammad Akbar Ali in the Los Angeles area, he used to ask me this all the time. He said, Brother, what was Adam's name before he was Adam? I'm like, what? <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> I saw a hand, I saw a hand over there. Anybody? A what? Abu. Abu? I'm that's a good one. But I, I, I'm going to give you the answer that he gave me. You're getting cold, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to give you the answer that he gave me and, and show you how the wisdom of this community. So the answer was Muslim. Huh? Yeah, ain't that something? He was a Muslim before he was out, right? And what did Imam Muhammad tell us about the word Muslim? What, what was one of the meanings that he gave us for the word Muslim? That's right, Allah Akbar. Muslim is a natural human being. And so when the pioneer would even tell me that, he said, he, he said his name was Muslim. I'm like, wow, Muslim. I said, wow, that just makes so much sense. So Adam was a natural human being. And so that fits right into the theme of, of our program, understanding our human value to enhance our productivity in society. And, and this is something that uh, our community under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and under the leadership of Imam Muhammad was teaching us how to get back to being a natural human being. Because that's something that this world robs us of, as it robs us of our identity as natural human beings. And so now you see they got TV programs where everybody's what, an alien, right? They got aliens and zombies, you know, rolling around, right, right? That's right. Because what they're saying is that the people, they robbed the people of their natural humanness and, and they became alienated from themselves. So now the people are walking around like zombies. So Allah has blessed us with the wisdom of this community 
to teach us and to show us how to be natural human beings. So we are Adam, Allahu Akbar. So at this point, um, we have the chair and the co-chair of the committee, and uh, we're gonna bring them forth because it looks like they got some announcements. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Sister Irene, you gotta come up here. <laughs> Dear believers, we thank Allah, we thank Allah for you being here. We thank Allah for all your services. We thank Allah for our coming together. Thank Allah for being able to, for us to see even more the light, all the testimony we had this evening. I'm a little bit emotional. And that's not easy. But tonight was a great tribute to the legacy of Imam Wardi Muhammad and the following of Allah's Messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you are not moved tonight by the commitment to service and that to continue on the legacy of our dear beloved Imam, who gave it to his son, Imam Wardi II, commitment to service of all the good things that we have when you think about all the prophets who asked Prophet Ibrahim, to ask that his progeny also be of good service. I want to bring our beloved President. Guess what, y'all? I got a service award. <laughs> All praise due to Allah. I'm going to make this quick because I'm really excited about uh, the next awardee. We saved the best for last, by my opinion, and you'll understand why I say that uh, when I get done. But this is, uh, you know, when I was young, I didn't. Ha I, I, I wasn't the tallest, fastest, smartest guy, and I used to see people getting awards all the time. And I said, "Man, I cherish a little award I got. I got a little league award, and I think I still have it in my closet in my attic somewhere. And I, I cherished it. But uh, you all kind of blow me away. But I, I have a guilty pleasure. I have to admit, my father said awards didn't mean nothing to him." But this means a heck of a lot to me. <laughs> I take I take count on all of them. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I uh, couldn't have. Uh, it wouldn't have been uh, as gratifying the work that we do and uh, the, the the anxiety. The road wouldn't have been as smooth uh, without you all support and you all's comfort uh, because. Responsibility can be frightening, especially if you really care about what you're doing. And uh, I thank Allah for having you all to mentor me and to guide me and to support me and to remind me of the wisdom and the, the, the things that you all have uh, passed on throughout our movement of this type of, this community, this unique and special community that we all uh, uh, evolved into and, uh, and that we're all so proud of. And uh, thank you. I really appreciate. Uh, you know, there's no, you know, there's no me without all of us. And I really have learned and uh, grown to appreciate the value of us as a collective group over the individuals. And now I understand why my father, uh, although he was the sole person, he was the pioneer. You know. Uh, we didn't know where he was going. <laughs> there were no scholars amongst the African American people that knew who Prophet Muhammad was and, and could teach Al Islam and teach us the Quran and the Sunnah and uh, uh, explain to us the mysteries of the Bible and of Scripture uh, before he met Muhammad. But he constantly downplayed himself and uh, his importance as, as an individual and upplayed the importance of us as being a unit, a body, you know. And uh, I thank Allah for that, and I appreciate you all for that. And I, I see a beautiful face in front of me. It's time for me to stop and get on to the good part. We got to make sure we have a picture.
man. So, every, uh, every, the whole room needs to be up here with me right now. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, uh, a lot of those. Appreciate it. Appreciate this. Thank you. It's going on my wall next to my other two. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I don't know. Just going next to something. Right in the center. Thanks, my sister. I'll watch that. Let's give him man, even my hand. He's he's uh <laughs> Next, we would like to give a tribute to Sister Genobia Tawhida Mahmoud. <laughs> Sister Genobia is a believer, educator, mentor, mother, worker, was born December 10, 1924 in Hennepin, Oklahoma, and migrated to Detroit, Michigan, in 1948, where she met and married A.W. Mahmoud, father of her 11 children. Wow. Wow. In 1949, Sister Tawhida was introduced to the Nation of Islam, which she immediately joined because of her own words. It answered questions that I had been searching for my entire life. Allahu Akbar. In 1952, under the guidance of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, founder and leader of the Nation of Islam, Sister Tawhida opened the University of Islam located on John C. Lodge Boulevard, the first Muslim school in Detroit, Michigan, for indigenous Muslim children. She was the principal of the school as well as one of, the, as one of, as well as one of several teachers. Student, students entered kindergarten at the age of four and went all the way through high school by the time they were 16 or 17 years of age. While raising her family and working, Sister Tawhida also attending Emi classes at the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor to continue her educational pursuits. In 1957, Sister Tawhida and family moved from Detroit to Chicago, Illinois, where she went to work as a high school teacher in the University of Islam located at 1535 South Greenwood Avenue in Hyde Park. In addition to teaching in the school, a few years Sister Tawhida also became the secretary of the MB M MGT and GCC in Chicago. The Muslim women's training class established by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in, in every major city that had a temple under his leadership. And during the late 1960s, she became the MGT captain at the temple in, in Kankakee, Illinois. Kankakee, help me lot. thank you. Kankakee, that was a tricky one, she helped me with it. <laughs> we would like to introduce Sister Genovia Tawhida Mahfoud. About, oh, yes. Sister Janet Matthew, this is my this is my dear sister right here. <laughs> of the last, Sister Janet Mahdi. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. 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 The praise belongs to Allah the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. On behalf of the family of Sister Tawhida Mahmoud, we accept this beautiful award from the community that she loved so very much. I know if she was here, she would just be overjoyed because no matter what awards or tribute you might get in this life, the one from your community that you serve and love means more than anything else that you could receive. Tonight, my mother has three generations of her family here. 
And we're going to ask the whole table of us to come up for a photo op. Not before I say something. Not before to, the president I got, says something. I got to say something about this sister. Uh, my father, he kept us close to him. And you know he's excommunicated from the Nation of Islam. I didn't know a lot of members of the Nation of Islam, nor did I know a lot of his immediate family uh, as a child. When he became leader, uh, Brother uh, uh, Rollo Cheney at the time, what's his name? Mm -hmm. Cheney. It, it was Rollo Cheney. He didn't change his name. Yeah, yeah he was, he changed to what? Ahmed Wahid. Ahmed Wahid Mahmoud, but a lot of you all back then knew him as Rollo Cheney. He um, was the husband and the father of. Uh, Sister, the husband of Sister Ta Zenobia Tahita, uh, he was really close to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a trusted, uh, uh, what was it, ranking? Uh, well, I know he was security. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a trusted security person. I remember as a child riding in the car with him all the time. And uh, not having close family, I used to go to school and I used to envy the children. I went to, I didn't go to the Muslim school. My father kept me out of the Muslim school went to Montessori schools. And I would hear children come back from vacations, they'd be tan, talk about how they spent their Christmas and all these gifts and all this. There was that aunt so-and-so, uncle so -and -so. I had none of that. And I kind of envied that. I didn't have a family. I didn't have a grandmother. I didn't have a grandfather. My grandparents had passed away on both sides. Uh, I had a grandmother, but you know, uh, I don't know if my parents were overprotective, kind of like a couple that I know today <laughs> when they come to their children. I ain't gonna say no names, me and Robin. But, uh, but when he became leader, he just dumped us off at, uh, with Brother Rollo and Sister Tahita, and they had a young son my age, and we used to go fishing together. Sister Zenobi, um, yeah, Sister Zenobi, we called her Sister Tahita, used to, uh, we used to go out in these little, like, wilderness places and, you know, push through the, the shrubbery and, and throw out uh, bamboo poles into the water and go for nice little rides. It seemed like we was going far, but we probably weren't doing them coming out here to the south suburbs. <laughs> but uh, uh, they became my family, you know? And I used to hear stories about it was like 20 of y'all, you know? Now, I think it was 11. It was close. Okay, it was close. They had a lot of brothers and sisters. And so, and they all gave and had the same, came from the same experience and had the same love. She was a true leader. She was like the queen bee. You know, children from all families, like, gathered. Her door was always open. She was one of the neatest, cleanest, most peaceful and respectful people, just like this sister. If you want to see her, you're looking at her right now. She was one of the cleanest, most conscious, most loving and kind people that most of these youngsters that uh, went to the uh, University of Islam, and uh, went to the school with us. It was a crew of us. It had to be two or three hundred of us. It felt like it. Um, they used to call her mother. Mm -hmm. The same, because they heard her children referring to her as mother. Mm -hmm. So everybody referred to her as mother. Uh, and it was such a beautiful thing. Uh, Imam Muhammad kept her very close to him at all times. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the only thing that kind of bothered me is that they seemed so uh, poor and simple. Uh, and I'm like, well, I need ma'am, you know, like, you know, buy her a house or something, or do something, do more for her, help. But I didn't ever say nothing, but it's, it, it just kind of lingered in the back of my mind. And I remember one of the most joyful experiences, a few years before she passed, her children bought her a home. And uh, that was one of the, I could see one of the happiest moments of her life, uh, having her home and having her, her children all happy and, and with her. You know, most of them were still in, the t in living in that town. Uh, she also served, even after we lost the property and left the property in Chicago, she continued to serve the community working for Imam Muhammad in such a, a valuable capacity that when she passed, uh, people programs shut down and stopped and ceased to exist. And, we, and people were like, we were like, you know, who, you know, you know, who, who, how, how do we do this? Or who, who used to handle this program? And it, it was always, uh, well, Sister Tahiti used to do that. Sister Tahiti used to do that. Sister Tahiti used to do that. So I didn't realize her past. And she, she got a history long before I was even born. I thought she did all her work in my lifetime. But uh, this was, a, she's a great pillar of our community. And her family are uh, one of the shining uh, beacons uh, 
that represent the leadership of Imam W.D. Muhammad. And some of them are here, and we want to call them up and take a quick picture. Inshallah. This is, this is my family. Inshallah. That whole table can come up. Oh, and by, by the way, they got such history uh, that we, we, we have to have Brother Oldsman and uh, Sister Samira come up, inshallah. Come on up, because they have a history also in Detroit. You all know about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad coming to stay with Brother Oldsman's family in Detroit. And Imam Muhammad was uh, born in the uh, city of Detroit. And uh, one of the families that uh, helped, uh, one of the uh, biggest supporters and that helped the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and continue the children uh, grew up. They, uh, Brother Oldsman, you know the story about his mother and uh, about his family, his whole family. Strong supporters even to this day. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Thank you. Say something about their mama. Uh oh. And you know that's a fight, don't you? <laughs> this one here, his name is Olsen. Right? No. See, I, see how small he is, how big I am? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he, he, he was the name, his mother named him uh, after me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but she was a wonder, she is a wonderful person because you ma'am say the ratchets never die. And she, she's alive and well among us, you can see it. And, but she was and is one of the, uh, I think, proudest sisters and most intelligent sister persons you would meet. And uh, she was an instructor at the school before, uh, in, uh, in Detroit. And she was there when we were leaving out of the university. But uh, just want to say her, her husband, he was, uh, he was also the uh, butcher for uh, Elijah Muhammad. And that man was strong because he, he took a cow. And we witnessed this. He twisted his head and just took him all the way to the ground. I mean, a full grown cow, about 1,800 pounds. And he twisted him and took him to the ground. And they tied his feet and he, he, he butchered him. And he taught you know, Elijah Muhammad how to do butcher. And that man, I, I said, like him, he was strong. But you can't say enough about about uh, Sister Magbo. She was a wonderful person, is a wonderful person, and very intelligent. And she taught us what we know, and she walked us too. She got a big family. <laughs> <laughs> she got a, a big family, and she lived in all of them. You can see yeah. her in all Amen. of them. And, and, and Janice is, is her replica, sad to say. <laughs> I said, like him.
Let's give the family of Sister Genovia Talhita my holy brother a round of applause. Well, this, we're coming to the conclusion of our program. But we don't have to leave because we're going to keep the music going and we're going to keep the party going. Uh, and then, uh, Ilham, is there any uh, announcements? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's right. Yeah. Tomorrow. We, uh, we have breakfast. We have a fashion show. Fashion breakfast fashion tomorrow. Show. Don't forget the breakfast. Get your tickets. If you haven't got them, we have the fashion show. It's the uh, community breakfast. Is that, is that right? And then we have the uh, fashion show. And then we have our public address tomorrow. Believers in, believers in uniform, Marvin, yes, yes, before the public address. Believers, believers in uniform. uniform is at uh, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. And then at uh, 2 o'clock, the, uh, the public address. Yes, yes, yes. So, dear believers, it has been a pleasure. Yes, sir. Imams meeting at 7 o'clock. Where? One of the, uh, one of the break, one of the, uh, one of the meeting rooms. Uh, one of, just check, uh, in the morning, shall uh, one of the yeah. go to the bar. There you go. Probably the same. I think it's like South Pavilion Two. Pavilion Two, Room Two. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. With the believers, we're gonna uh, close out uh, with a dua. Rabbina tina fedunya hasanatan wafila kirati hasanana wakina athabinar. Ola, give us good in this world and good in the hereafter and save us from the fiery passions of sin. Amen. Assalamu alaikum, dear believers, and we will see you tomorrow. And brother.